Hi Sunday School friends, this is Miss Casey and I hope you're all doing well. And I miss seeing you at Sunday School, but I'm super excited because today we're gonna do Sunday School in a whole new way that we've never done before. And that is Sunday School online. And actually for the next few weeks, we won't be able to meet in person at church. So we're gonna do Sunday School um, online and I'm super excited because many of the different teachers from Faith Point are going to share um, the lessons each week and you'll be able to find those lessons on Faith Point's web page under the Sunday School tab and each week once they are added to the website we will send a remind message on the remind app to your moms and dads and to let them know that it's up and that you guys can access it and so we are super excited and we look forward to the day when we get to be back together again. But until then, we're going to do this. So um, this week we are going to learn about Daniel in the lion's den. And before I start, I'm going to show you my Bible that I have. This is the Jesus Storybook Bible. And this is a Bible that we use a lot during Sunday school. It's actually one of my personal favorites too. Um, and uh, if you have this Bible, I'm going to encourage you to stop this video or pause it for a minute and go get your Jesus Storybook Bible and bring it back so that when I'm reading the story you can follow along because it might not be very easy to see the pictures because we're doing this on video. Um, if you don't have this Bible it is no big deal. Um, you can just um, follow along and listen as I read and then I'll show you the pictures the best I can. And then when we get done reading our story I'm going to give you a little activity and challenge for the week and then you will be able to find another lesson from another teacher next week. So um, if you want, go grab your Bible and we'll get started. Um, we're gonna, the story that we're reading today is on page 152, if you do have this Bible, and um, I'll show you the pictures and then we'll read the story. So here you go. Here is the first page. And it says, things were not looking good for God's people. They had been captured and taken far from home, and now they were slaves of the king of Babylon. But God had not left his people. He was with them, and he was looking after them. Daniel loved God and obeyed him. Now God made Daniel able to understand lots of difficult things, so it wasn't long before the king of Babylon noticed him. King Darius liked how clever Daniel was, so he made Daniel his most important helper of all and put him in charge of lots of other helpers. But the other helpers didn't like this. They wanted the king to like them best. They wanted to get rid of Daniel, so they spied on Daniel. They tried to find things wrong with Daniel, things they could tell the king, things they could, but there weren't any, none. They couldn't find anything at all. Except there was just one thing. Every day, three times a day, without fail, no matter what, Daniel went to his room, closed the door, and prayed. And I'll show you this picture. They smiled to themselves. Let's get the king to make a law. No one is allowed to pray to anyone except the king. Daniel won't obey this law, and he will be punished. They were pleased with themselves for being so clever and hurried off to tell the king. The king liked their idea. He didn't know they were tricking him, so he made it into a law. Everyone must pray only to me. If you don't, the lions will have you for their dinner. Daniel heard this. He knew it was wrong to pray to anyone except God. He had to do what God said, whatever it cost him, even if it meant he would die. So Daniel went to his room closed the door and prayed. And here's the next picture with the lions. Let's see. That's just what the bad men knew Daniel would do. They skipped straight off to tell the king, Oh, your most glittery highest. Your law says it does not, that everyone must pray. <laughs> Let me read that again. Oh, your most glittery highest. Your law says... It, does it not that everyone must pray to you alone, sire? Yes, said the king. Oh, magisterial brightness, then correct us if we're wrong. But it would seem that Daniel is praying to God, not to you. The king was sad. He had been tricked. He didn't want to hurt Daniel. He couldn't change his law. And so he let the soldiers throw Daniel to the lions. 
May your God, who you love so much, rescue you, said the king. Here's another picture. The king went back to his palace, but he didn't sleep that night. Not a wink. He tossed and turned until finally, at the first glimmer of dawn, he leaped out of bed and ran straight to the den. Daniel, he cried, has your God rescued you? Yes, Daniel shouted. God sent an angel to close the lion's mouths. And there, resting on his head on Daniel's lap, was the biggest lion purring like a kitten. The king brought Daniel out of the den. Look, he said, Daniel hasn't even ha doesn't even have a scratch. The king made a new law. Daniel's God is the true God, the God who rescues. Pray to him instead. God would keep on rescuing his people, and the time was coming when God would send another brave hero like Daniel. He would love God and do what God said, whatever it cost him, even if it meant he would die. And together they would pull off the greatest rescue the world has ever known. So that's the end of our story. And that's kind of a, a interesting story because can you imagine if you were going to get thrown in a lion's den? How would you feel? You might be scared or you might be worried. But Daniel had God with him and he knew God was with him. And he knew that God would take care of him. And so that is the cool, the so cool part about this story is that with God, anything is possible and God protects us. And one thing that we noticed when Daniel was, um, what something that Daniel did every day was he prayed and talked to God. And um, so this week, I'm going to give you a little challenge because we have some extra time on our hands and it's important that when we're feeling worried or scared or sad or even happy that we talk to God and pray to God and tell him how we're feeling and remember that he loves us and that he's always with us and he's protecting us. So this week, I want you to do a little scavenger hunt around your house and I want you to find some rocks and they can be like this size of rock or they can be even a tiny little rock. Doesn't matter. And we're going to make prayer rocks this week. And these, um, whenever you find your rock, if it's okay with your mom and dad, um, you can get out some paints or some kind of, um, paints probably work the best. But if you have other materials that you want to decorate your rock, you can. And we are going to make prayer rocks. And then after they dry or you're finished decorating them, I want you to put these rocks, my daughter Addison um, painted these for me so they're nice and pretty, and I want you to put it somewhere special like by your bed or um, um, somewhere in your kitchen or your living room so that you remember to take time to talk to God um, when you're feeling worried or sad or scared or happy or whatever. Um, it's just a reminder that it's important to take time each day, excuse me, to um, pray to God and to talk to God and tell him how you're feeling and um, let him know that you love him and that you know that he's there with you. So um, we don't really know how many times a day Daniel prayed to God, but um it says in the Bible that he played, prayed three times a day and that he would go to the window that faced Jerusalem and he'd get down on his knees and pray. And so these prayer rocks are going to help us to remember to trust God and pray every day just like Daniel did. So, um, and if you want to, you could um, take a picture of your rocks and um, then maybe your parents can share them with us or put them on the Remind app and show us what your rocks look like. And like I said, you can put them wherever you want, but they're just a little way to um, remind yourself that it's important to talk to God each day and to let him know what you're thinking and um, also to let him know that um, if you're worried or sad or scared that he's there and that he'll take care of you. So anyways, um, let's fold our hands and we're going to pray. And then um, I thought it would be fun if we could sing a song that we usually do at Sunday school to remind us how good our God is. So anyways, let's bow our heads and pray. Dear God, thank you for letting us do Sunday school, even if it has to be online. Um, we look forward to the day when we can all be together again. But until now, we're so excited that we have 
this awesome technology that we can still study your word and learn more about you. Please be with all our friends from Sunday School. Help them to be good listeners and to stay healthy. And I just pray that they learn and know that you love them and that you're always there for them and that if they want to talk to you at any time, they can. Um, be with us this week and we look forward to being together again through um, technology and online. Um, and we look forward to when we can be together again at church. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So um, I want to do our song that we do at Sunday School quite a bit. And that is the song is called My God is So Great. And if you guys remember the song, you can um, teach the song to your family and you can do it at home too. But this is also another good a way that you can remember how good our God is, is by singing. So um, I want you to get your muscles out and we're going to sing our song together. So this song goes like this. My God is so great, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so great. So strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are his, the rivers are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so great, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. And then at Sunday school, what we like to do, and your kids can probably tell you this, is we like to do different ways of singing this song. So I thought either you can come up with some ways at home or we um, would do just a couple different ways. And then if you can think of other ways, you can sing the song however you want. So one of the other ways that we like to sing the song is with a big, strong voice, kind of like God is talking. So that's this is the way this one goes. And I would love it if you'd sing it along with me. All right, here we go. My God is so great, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so great, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are his, the rivers are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so great, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. And then there's another way that we like to do this song, and that is our little squeaky, mousy voice. So if everybody can get out their really squeaky, mousy voice, we're going to sing it with that voice. So here we go. My God is so great, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so great, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are his, the rivers are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so great, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. So now if you want to, you guys can come up with different ways to sing that song. And I hope you have fun with it. I hope you have a great week. And I look forward to seeing you in the coming weeks.